Good morning, listeners, and welcome to The Final Plan, the show where James and I each week run down our final thoughts before the FPL game week. My name is Serge. Oh. Weird. <laughs> My name is James. I was just yawning, mate. It's uh, me. Friday morning. You didn't have a good night's sleep, did you? No, well, you didn't. We got the coffees in in the morning on the way in. Yeah, it, feels yeah. a, it does feel a little lethargic this week. I'll be oh, honest with you. God, liven up. Uh, I thought you were going to be a bit tired as well. I've listened to some other pods this week that made me feel lethargic. Can we bring oh, some energy really? back in? Okay, fine, <laughs> we will. Uh, some crazy Carabao Cup. We should drink Carabao. That's probably all liven us up. Carabao Cup this week. Big game with Liverpool and Arsenal scoring a, a, a shit ton of goals. Yeah, you know it's a good game when, yeah. the, when the 90 minutes has more goals than the penalties. Than the penalties is <laughs> mad. Um yeah, but interesting to see City getting a nice, easy cup draw again. I think that's the talk of town at the moment. Standard, would you expect. Um, yeah, so uh, no, no injuries, though, coming out of any of those games. And uh, into the into the Premier League well, weekend Rashford, we go. Rashford at the Knock. time of, yeah, possibly was limping towards the end of the game with Chelsea. Yeah. So it could I be a doubt. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't trust Ole at all. He's, uh, he's done that before with David De Gea, for example, injured and then suddenly appears in the squad and on the team sheet. So... Well, the De Gea one looked like it was very similar to the Allison incident. And so myself, just on watching the pictures and the fact that nobody was near him, there's no contact. Yeah. I, I assumed he'd he'd pulled done he'd, something yeah, bad, and and he was going to be out for a while. So yeah, anyway. interesting one, yeah. Rashford, what, I mean, what a goal though, by the way. Yeah, he is a machine, but I think he's just still he's always going to be overlooked in FPL, unfortunately. Um, how are you set for your team? Game week 11 we're going into now. Second, uh, well into the second quarter of the season now. Yeah, set. i uh, made early moves this week. I've, I've taken a minus four. The Joel Matip injury is a major blow for myself. Um, and then I looked at it for a long time. The reports are that he's likely to be out for six weeks, Joel Matip. Yep. I've obviously been on this treble Liverpool defensive wave that's... Done me all right because yep. of uh, Matip and, and TAA's attacking returns rather than their defensive abilities. And I did look at, uh, strongly about the idea of bringing Van Dyke back in because I yeah. still believe in it as a system. But I also believe I'm getting to the area where I thought I would, where I probably am going to want to get Mane in. Although the difference between Mane and Salah is closing. Uh, Mane is obviously owned by more now. And the more it closes, the more the rebel I am would want to get, get salary. Salah back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that, you know. I think we're rubbing off on each other. But I, I actually like that idea. Uh, always go with the underdog or the differential. Um, so now double Liverpool defence. So you got rid of uh, Otamendi and Matip and you've bought in... Mendy. Yep. So instead of Otamendi, I've just got Mendy. Two Bens. Um, and Ben Chilwell. Yeah, so Ben and Mendy and Ben Chilwell. Big at the back has just become attack from the back. Okay. Rebranded. I did the move uh, quite early because there were there had been a couple of transfer moves where uh, the price had gone up very unexpectedly. I think mm. Anthony Martial on Monday maybe was he was nowhere near predictions on statistics or fix and jumped up. Um, so I took the chance. Chilwell was close to going up. It wasn't a case of being priced out, but it, there were a couple of players in my squad, well, namely one. Who I've still got in Todd Cantwell, who's who's hurt me for a little bit from the value perspective. One of the takes I took on getting Mendy and Frota Mendy, although I, as you'll find out in a minute, I probably could and perhaps should have just left it. I wanted to get him in for the potential power this week because I don't think Otto Mendy will play. I see no reason why Mendy won't play because um, Angelino's got a knock now as well from yeah. the cup game in a week. Um. And I felt that leaving that for the extra week when City then go to Liverpool was too late. So I've gone in to try and get the power of an immediate return out of it. It might be that Mendy proves to be the wrong decision. I've got no doubts on on Chilwell having looked into it a little bit more. And a real eye test theory or, or thoughts that I've had on Ben Chilwell for a really long time... Uh, those who have listened to us regularly will remember how highly I spoke of him when Leicester lost at, at Wembley in February. And I think that sort of return that he showed last week has been coming for a long time. They have a good run of fixtures. I think for 
those who are already on Siunku, it's fine. For those who've gone on Pereira, I don't think you should rush to to come off Chilwell. I just think it's time to get one in with a really good run of fixtures. And for me, the price point and the timing is right to go with Chilwell, who went up in value last night. Have you left any money in the bank? Yeah, it's about 1.2 or so. So you've still got quite a bit in the bank. Or something. And then, um, what's your overall squad value now? Oh, I'd have to have a look. Yeah. Um, what I can say is, excuse me, I now have a selection headache, which perhaps if I hadn't brought Mendy in, I wouldn't quite have. Um, I sent a poll out on uh, late on Wednesday, which I let run for the whole day. Um, a hypothetical scenario, which you're know, sure of 10 starters, who would be your 11th starter between these two? Lundstrom or Pukki? Mm-hmm. You've seen the vote, haven't you, Sergio? I voted as well. <laughs> what a good lad you are. Yeah, of course. You and 1,500 others, mate. <laughs> and I was I voted for the losing uh, striker. I voted for Pukki, and Lundstrom was the one that, uh, that won your poll on Twitter, which I found quite surprising, I'll be honest with you. Um, Brighton have been conceding goals all season. Norwich are away from home. I don't think it matters whether Norwich are home or away. But but L- <coughs> Lundstrom's at home to Burnley. I can understand that, but Burnley have been scoring goals as well, Although, albeit now they're missing Chris Wood um, with an injury. And um, when they did score last week, Chelsea were already 4-0 up. So I sometimes feel like when, when teams get three or four goal leads, they can get a little sloppier at the back. Whether or not that means Burnley will still be able to score this weekend, I'm not sure. But they've got attacking talent in uh, Dwight McNeil and, and, and Ashley Barnes and stuff. So I would have gone Pookie, I'll be honest with you. But the majority of the population want you to go with Lundstrom. 73% think Lundstrom. I think it speaks... Um Volumes of the high regard that he's obviously held within the the FPL Twitter community at the moment. Um, you know, FPL Badger, our Norwich correspondent, said would have to go to Lundstrom. Mm. <laughs> I know that he's sold Pookie this week. But then Brian at Blades Attack responded with, always go with a striker. Yeah. So, and there's plenty saying, you know, you have to, you know, Chris Wood's bizarre poll result. If you've still got Pookie, you play him, surely. Jason H, who's a Norwich fan, Lundstrom, get Norwich players away from your team as quickly as possible. <laughs> so Very torn. Yeah, a little bit. I, well, I'm not torn at all. I know what I'm doing. I think a lot a lot, a lot more. The ownership on uh, Lundstrom is probably a lot higher. And when you do put polls like that out, I do find that people gravitate towards the player that they have in their squad quite often rather than looking at it in an impartial point of view. But they're both obviously still really highly owned. Yeah, but Lundstrom's quite a bit higher because of the value. I mean, I'm a Lundstrom owner, not a Pookie owner, and I voted for Pookie. So for, uh, minority. For, for consistency of rebellion, obviously as 70-odd percent have voted for Lundstrom, I'm going to go with Timu Pookie. Yeah, I'm with you then. Um, I, well, I, I can see a lot of people in their ears or watching on YouTube are going to be like, you nutter, mate, what are you doing? And I think in the community, I think Lundstrom will start for the majority of people this week. So there's that risk. Um, he would still sit as first sub for me. So if anybody misses out, he obviously would come in. I'm looking at it from, I know what you're saying about Burnley and Chris Wood. I, I feel though, they're the kind of side that will... Score in any game, Burnley. Are, I, yeah. I never look at them yeah. and feel like, oh, they, I mean, even in the game against Chelsea at the weekend, scored mm. twice. Ashley Barnes missed a sitter at one nil. On a different day, although they got well beat, they actually could have got three or four themselves, Burnley. And I feel like I've been holding Pookie to get to these two games. So now, not to follow through with it would be incorrect. He had an amazing chance against United, which he put over, which I think a few weeks ago, confidence-wise, he would have put away. I think Brighton, I would expect Brighton to beat Norwich. I think it it speaks volumes for Brighton that most people would think that now this weekend. Yeah, but not to nil. But it'll be quite open, you know, against Spurs, for example, as good as they were with the ball, they were tactically very astute. I think they might be a bit more open at the we weekend. We scored there when we played early in the season. Everton put in two last week. You know, they're, they're leaky. Brighton are, are leaky at the back. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I think Puki is the better choice. I think. But. The only thing that pulls me back on it is if I look at the two, and one of the things I often talk about is ceiling, don't I? Mm. And Lundstrom's might be higher. 
because you've you've got the you've got the, the double the defender in he you've got the double chance haven't you the, yeah. the, the clean sheet and the, the potential goal and you know if he hits a goal he's definitely going to hit the bonus if they hit the clean sheet as well he's probably nearly a lock because it's at, at Sheffield United where the, it's not it's not likely to be yeah. high scoring he's nearly a lock for a fifteen pointer yeah and that's the the fear I think for me as well I wasn't as convinced as others to get him in this time last week I sat here and went. I'm going to get Jamal Lascelles. I don't know if after this podcast we'll sit back and go, actually, Change yeah, your mind I'm going to go for Lundstrom. Lundstrom. But, um, Who's the armband on I'm then? I'm pretty sure I'm going to go for Pookie. Armband, no question for me at all. Raheem, Raheem Sterling. Yeah. Um, interesting uh, lineup this week. I'm, I, I started the week, for people that will listen regularly to the, to the main pod, thinking about Vardy. We spoke about Vardy and the People's Poll on Monday. And my move was potentially a Bamiyang to get down to Vardy and then that frees me up a bit of money and I could have even got Harry Kane um, Kane and Vardy for a Bamiyang and Wilson I don't think necessarily this week that would have given me a be- better coverage um, and I'd also have had to take a hit for that because I've only got one free transfer this week and I've got to the end of the week and decided to do nothing uh, I think I'm going to roll my transfer the Vardy Kane move I got priced out of because Vardy had his second rise quite early in the week. Um, so he's had two rises this week. Good good value for someone like you who bought him at 9.1. Um, but I don't think he's now going to rise again till next week. So I may as well ride out the Crystal Palace fixture. And then hopefully maybe Sunday night I might go back for, for Vardy. Um, so I'm going to end up going into this week with exactly the same team as I had last week. Um, for the uh, seventh time this season, I'm not going to be making a transfer. And I haven't taken a hit all season yet either. Um, there's something that we should maybe talk about on the main pod. At what point do I get a little bit more aggressive? Because I am 1.9 million, which isn't great. It's it's one of the things I've tried to do this year. I think, for example, if you take the, the Mendy and Chilwell transfers in for me last year, that would have just been uh, Matip to Chilwell. Yeah. And I'd have waited it out because I wouldn't have seen any. And it's it's questionable if that is worth it on the hit. We're not going to know till after the season no. game, really. no. Um, if Mendy hits the clean sheet and Otamendi doesn't play and Lundstrom banks, it's well worth it, isn't it? Yeah. And then I've, I've got that power. And Mendy's ownership is ridiculous at like 1% odd. Mm. So, I mean, it, I think it will just take one attack in return, for example, and that will fly. Also, just briefly on City, obviously after this week, they do run into quite a, a difficult run. fixture run. Um. All I'd say on City and Liverpool is that I really don't look too much at the fixtures. No, when they, I'm looking at the fixtures with these guys, I'm probably looking at it more from a captaincy perspective. And from that perspective, it, you might find it's difficult to captain City players too much between now and a sort of mid-December. Well, I've only got the two in Edison and Kevin De Bruyne. I haven't got any others at the moment because my, my funds are spread elsewhere. I wouldn't be surprised if this time next week I'm moving from Sterling to Mane. Mm. Um, I'm going to be uh, in answer to your debate about Lundstrom and Puki. I myself am playing Lundstrom this week, although the choice for me is Lundstrom or Diego Rico, and uh, they've got Manchester United at home, Bournemouth do. So I think uh, Lundstrom's the better shout for me. But Edison in goal, TAA and Robbo as always, with Lundstrom at the back. My midfield is the same Kevin De Bruyne, Yarmolenko, Madison. Uh, Madison's got a decent enough fixture away at Palace. It won't be easy, but um, I'm going to stick with him. Mount away at Watford and then Son at Everton away. Um, hopefully Tottenham have a, have a decent game there and he, he can pick up some points. And I'm sticking with Callum Wilson and Aubameyang up front, both of blank three in a row. The likelihood of those two with their consistency over the years, blanking four in a row, both of them, is so low. That um, it will happen. But it, nah, it's going to be, it's, it's what I'm <laughs> calling revenge of the wild card. Both are going to score hat tricks and more wild cards are going to come into actually getting me some points. Um, and then I'll roll my transfer and see what happens next week. But with no injuries and no injury worries, I'm happy to go into this week with with that lineup. Um, and a fair split of home games versus away games. The majority of my team have have home games as well, so I don't really see any reason to move away from that. Yeah, fair enough. Good luck, North East South. Yeah, I I only want to cover this very briefly because we need to talk about the differential side. We do. Um, I'm highly likely to roll, I think. I've not spent too much time on it. It's now 46 point difference between Suja's team from the 10 most northerly sides and mine from the 10 most southern. Um, 
difficult week for me. I think I will likely captain Aubameyang in that home to Wolves. Mm. I've had uh, I've had no captaincy returns for so many weeks now. I've had the armband on Aguero three weeks in a row, and he gave me a four pointer, a zero, and uh, a, a two pointer last week with the captaincy armband, which has struggled. I made one transfer last week. I got rid of uh, Firmino and moved to Jamie Vardy. Um, price wise it was pretty much they got to the point where they were like for like so I didn't really have any money to play with there and Vardy came in with a 20 pointer which basically saves my game week there Um, but I didn't make the second transfer that I was going to make last week which was getting rid of McTominay and he scored last week so that just was a stroke of luck but I wanted to roll my transfer Um, so I have two transfers this week I mean I'm not sure I've already got Mane, De Bruyne, Aguero, Otamendi, Trent so um, you need to fix up your defence, mate. Vardy, what? Luca Dean, Trent Alexander Arnold, and Otamendi. I can move from Otamendi. Well, if to, Otamendi to, don't play, yeah. you're down to two players, mate. Yeah, that's because you ain't got nothing on the bench there yeah. either. Hanley and Taylor is an issue. I'll have to get rid of Otamendi this week. But I got two transfers, so I'll just figure it out. Um, I think Mendy is a good shout. I do like Ben Mendy. I've got fond memories of the start of last season where he was returning week in week out. Um, and you, everybody loves just a, a head case not to like Mendy. There's nothing not to like about him. Um, I can't get him into my main team. So the, the North v South team, my North team's always been where I've been able to put players that I haven't had in my main team. Kevin De Bruyne, Jamie Vardy, and now it may well be Ben Mendy. Okay. Um, but yeah, armband this week. I think I'm going to stick with Aguero. Four weeks on the trot. Just on Aguero, I, I, those who listen to the main podcast Monday night, I kind of said it then, but I'll say it again now. And if I'm wrong, then fine, I'm wrong. It's my opinion. Um, I, I think Aguero owners should captain Aguero this week. Um, there's one side of the coin that says, okay, it's not working out how many times you take the slap. I would look at it again from a ceiling perspective and say, look, if he starts at home to Southampton, you're rubbing your hands. And I think I, I think it's an obvious sell after the game. But I feel like, go for it. This, this, this Aguero Jesus problem has always been there. And I think the longer term resolution is, unfortunately, and this goes for quite a lot of players, is unless the direct competitor is injured, unfortunately at the moment, you can't, you can't buy Aguero. No. Um, I'd give you a different example. So for me, like one of, one of the transfers I did consider was Marcus Alonso for me personally. And I feel like I'm one serious Emerson injury away from absolutely propelling him into my team. And I would. And then, like, Lundstrom's out. And then I would have a ridiculous back five. And that'd be it set. Forget it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not going to go in and, and do that when I think Emerson could quite easily dislodge him. Yeah. That's the challenge. I would, for, I would, I would captain Aguero this way. I really think it's worth the gamble. I think if you... If you have Sterling as well, I could understand why you would obviously go for Sterling, who does look like we think he'll start, but we're all only guessing. None of us really know what Pep's no. going to do. Champions League in a week, big game at Liverpool the week after. He'll do what he wants with it, won't he? He will. You mentioned our differential team. Um, and we've got five minutes or so, so let's talk about our differential team. You want to pull the wild card on this. Um, Alisson ended up being on the bench. There's only one point difference between him and Heaton at the weekend in the end anyway. Um, but now we've got a team with Alisson, Doherty, Zuma, Suyunku, um, two in, well, Otamendi is a rotation risk and Matip is now out. Uh, McGinn, Pepe, Richarlison, Son and Riyad Mahrez, Origi, Jimenez and Vardy. I think, uh, you want to pull the wild card on this team. Yeah. And I don't blame you. <laughs> I think ultimately... Alisson is definitely still a keeper. Matt Doherty is a keeper. I think Siyunku's still not a bad shout because of the price that he's in at. Um, McGinn, if we need to make weight and a cheaper player, but we never really struggle with budget in this in this team, may be worth considering keeping everyone else's places up for grabs. So apart from Vardy. Well, Vardy has to go. <laughs> Who we can't keep because he's exactly. only 20%. Excuse yeah. me. So... We can only buy players owned by under 10% and we have to sell if they hit 20%. So we have to sell Jamie Vardy now. And it's come at a time when Matip's now got a long-term injury. Otamendi's obviously a serious rotation risk. Pepe's not performing. Mares is a, a rotation risk. And suddenly we honestly could be looking at this weekend with like eight players. Yep. So I think now's the right time to wild card. I sent you a screenshot last night where I listed six, five players that I'd want to keep. I'd now make that six. So I'd keep both goalkeepers, Alisson and Heaton. Mm-hmm. 
the reason I keep heating with Allison is the game week 18 problem. Villa at home to Southampton have got one of the better fixtures on the day. Yeah, Done. makes sense. We don't, because we can't really get to the big hitters here, um, essentially the value doesn't, we don't need to force through a 4.0 keeper. Let's no. have a playing goalkeeper on the uh, bench. I agree with you on that. We're go- we'll talk more about this fixture headache on the main pod next week, right? Liverpool's uh, fourth round of the Carabao Cup. Uh, sorry, quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup and then the game against West Ham and then the club World Club Championships or whatever, all clashing, could cause a headache for people that are tripled up on Liverpool potentially. And if you want to hear about it in more extended detail, please feel free to vote for it in Sunday's People Poll. Yeah. I think keep the two Wolves guys, Doherty and Jimenez. Yep. I'd keep Richarlison at the moment. He's playing as an OOP striker, so and they, why not? They run into a difficult run of fixtures soon, but I'd happy keep him for what we've got at the moment. And because of his value, he'll offer us a nice escape route to someone lower when we know a bit more, I think. I'm with you on that. I think Richarlison's a good shout. I, I wouldn't have him in my main team, but I think he is yeah. a good shout. And we keep Sonny. We've got to keep someone in there who's got some sort of captaincy potential, I think. Yeah, I would always keep Sun. I'm keeping him in my main team as well. Um, he's explosive and uh, it wouldn't surprise me any week if he got a goal and assist or a couple of goals. Um, and we want to try and get as many premiums and players from the top six that we know are going to play as possible because quite often we can't because of the ownership. So Sun being as low ownership as he is makes sense to, to keep Sun in. So essentially we haven't got enough time to really debate this out because we could debate it for an hour, I think. Yep. I've, I think it's worth running through the team that you've put together well, because I, I don't have any objections to anyone in that squad. Okay, so I'll run for it. So we stay with Heaton and Allison in goal. Correct. Defensive-wise, I think what we're looking at here is a, a flexible formation where some weeks will be three at the back, some four, some weeks five or four in midfield, some weeks one or even three up front, possibly. Yeah. Essentially, there's no budget taken here because we don't need to. Everybody here is less than 10% ownership. Correct. So defenders we've gone for Chilwell and Mendy. Yeah. Seems a no-brainer for this. Marcus Alonso, Matt Doherty. At the moment, I've put Jamal Lascelles in. Mm. Um, he would obviously be the fifth defender. Midfield. I don't mind leaving Lascelles in there um, while we're talking about the defence. I think there might be a couple of better options, maybe. Uh, Matt Target being one. Not right now, but in a few weeks well, I've got when a, they're fixed I've, I've got a little watch list I'm going to come yeah. on to after. I'll throw a few different names out. And I'm hoping he's on there. Matt Target's not. <laughs> um, midfield, to go with Son and Richardson, Christian Pudisic. I think, I mean, it's a differential team. He's certainly a differential the next name is an absolute lock for this, Anthony Marshall. Yep. And Yuri Tielemans, who is the top scoring player in FPO at the moment with under 10% of ownership. Okay. At 48 points. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this in the Sky game as well, though. The thing with uh, Tielemans is that he's hauling. So he's had four or five games where he's hauled and the rest of the time he's blanking. But, you know, he can haul at any time. Leicester got good fixtures and he's cheap, six and a half million cheap. Solid as well, no rotation risk, no, nothing there. No, no, no. And a front three of Jimenez, Morpe, and Danny Ings. Dings. And the reason I like, well, actually, if you spell it out, it spells Jim. <laughs> this is what FPL has become now. Who can find the oddest uh, acronyms within their defenders or their strikers? Game with Jim up front. I don't think Jim will start together too much up front. I think what we do with that is we go more pay this week at home yeah. to Norwich. And then Brighton run into tougher fixtures and Southampton have a decent run. Mm. That's probably the, where we're at. And let's yeah, not I fuck about Yeah, I think Mope and Jimenez, uh, Mope is going to end up being one of the fines this season for anyone that's got onto him early. Uh, I think he's going to start consistently being that main front man. Glenn Murray's going to, he's done now, isn't he? Let's be honest, he's finally. Now that squad that I've named there still leaves us with 2.9 million in the bank. Okay. So... I want to throw out a, a list of names that I've not included there that are also differentials. Matt Target. <laughs> Siunku and Tomori are ruled out for, for this, who are both great value for FPL. But I feel like for us, like we can go for more powerful players from the same teams. Well, you're looking at Chilwell, Alonso, Mendy, Doherty, all fullbacks, right? And we can afford Attacking them. Attacking fullbacks. We can afford them. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think... Siunku and Tomori are, because of their value for most most people buying them not because of necessarily their attacking returns I put two other players on the watch list as budget options as alternatives sailor sells Joel Ward at Crystal Palace 4.6 who I think he's 
possibly even at slightly more expensive might be a better option than than maybe Gary Cahill. Uh, Palace have an awful run at the moment, but they're about to walk into good fixtures, and obviously yeah. he's one we'd, we'd leave us like third sub until In they walk weeks. into it. Yeah, and the other one's Serge Aurier. Don't You're laugh. mad. <laughs> You're mad. Well, it, it, he's cheap though. Or is he four nine? Four eight. Four eight it's for be- a Tottenham defender who's well, playing is mental. Back. And the fixture run for Spurs over a longer period is beginning to ease, having got that Liverpool fixture out the way. Personally, I wouldn't go down this route. Nah. But he is in a position where, because we're firming up this squad, we probably can take a chance, like we've done with, say, Alonso and Mendy, and be all right knowing that we'll definitely have an 11. So, possible to consider. Obviously, alternative to Mendy, and I'd consider this perhaps throwing him in even instead of Lascelles, is Cancelo mm. at 5.3 million. Yep. Go with Mendy and Cancelo. Definitely one of them is going to play at the moment because we've only got three fit fullbacks. Yeah. Cancelo obviously can cover for Mendy at left back. Yep. Um, and the only other name defense, def, def, names def, for defenders I put down were all Arsenal. David Luiz at 5.8, Tierney and Bellerin at 5.4. Tierney, I've got such a soft spot for this guy and he's never played a minute yet. Well, he's played last game. but Why have you got such a soft spot? I just think him? he's going to become uh, a real attacking threat for Arsenal I think he's going to be he, the number of crosses he's taking and um, and the assists he's going to create this season I've got a feeling I haven't got evidence on it I have like some evidence from Celtic stats and from the cup games that he's played for Arsenal and the eye test if as much as you trust Arsenal fan TV everyone's raving about him 5.4 <laughs> to the fuck I think he's going to be alright Arsenal fan TV well, I trust them to know a little bit about their players. They play him ahead of Kalasinac. So as soon as he, he plays consistently, Tierney at 5.4, I think he's he's a, a real interesting option. I want to get him into my main team, put it that way. Okay. Um, yeah. We but can... as it stands, the only thing is I'd probably get rid of Lascelles. But... If you went to make that move, like Tierney and Lascelles can do. Yeah, I would do Tierney. I, I just feel Lascelles. like it becomes even more of, of a, a fucking headache. headache. Like, oh, man, causing ourselves more problems. Um that's actually, it's the hardest area to pick, I think, is defensively, actually, in this. And I just feel like, I know what you're saying, you go with the power of, the, of the, those fullbacks. Yeah. I feel like waiting on that with, say, Tierney for this differential team, because yeah, I, I think the solution might be... We still do be get be- a transfer a week, right? I think the solution might be Bellerin, once he's up and running. Uh, I think Tierney's going to score more points than Bellerin this season, but... You know, we still do get a free transfer every week in this team, or, so we can or, hold out a couple of weeks. as as ever... The solution might always be not to have Arsenal defenders. Defenders. <laughs> um, some alternative midfielders to mention. We've kind of taken Riyad Mahrez out of this squad. I don't really want to, but I just can't deal with it, mate. He's not been getting the minutes. We know that when he plays, he'll get the returns. Yeah. We don't know when he's going to play. I don't know. Do we leave him in for tomorrow and <laughs> no, hope that he does? No. No, no, no. no, no. Yarmolenko, your man. Yes, I just feel like beyond tomorrow, though, the fixtures firm up a bit for you. And I, there are other players who are better choices, yeah, I think. I, I'm going to be moving away from Yarmolenko within two game weeks. So I don't think um, he's really a consideration. Uh, Dwight McNeil at Burnley is the same price and on only one less point than Yarmolenko so far. I like Dwight McNeil. I really, he's kind of football. I hope West Ham put some money up for or what have you, but I don't see it for this. I mean, I'm I'm comparing him against any other midfielders that we have and I don't think McNeil stacks up against any of these guys. It's all right, haven't it? 42 points in 10? Yeah, it's decent. For Burnley? It's like decent. Four, it's good. Mm. But Pulisic, Richarlison, Tielemann's much more explosive. So a couple of alternatives to mention, Chelsea and Leicester. Uh, or sorry, just one for Chelsea, Jorginho. Uh, we don't We don't need to no, have we a budget don't, we, enabler we, like that. We don't need to. I don't know if last weekend set a bit of precedence in terms of penalties. Sure. And they do have players, Chelsea, in your likes of Pulisic, Hudson, Adore, who are going to win them. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but not enough. Not enough of a need. Uh, and obviously, less alternatives to Tielemans, Pe- Ayosi, Perez. Anyone. And, <laughs> <laughs> Anyone from Leicester's <laughs> midfield. Well, you can't have Madison. No. Uh, Ayosi, Perez, and Harvey Barnes. Um, of the th- of them, Tielemans is the best choice at the moment. I agree yeah. at the moment. Most yeah. consistent. Uh, uh, in terms of minutes as and well. And just a few forward names to mention as alternatives. Um, Diogo Jota. I feel like Jimenez is a lock for us though. So I don't yeah, wanna, I, I don't, don't want to double up both. on Wolves. So two, Jota's not two budget special. ones you can consider. Connolly at Brighton yep. at 4.6, I think is going to offer amazing value. And obviously Lise Mousse, our friend Tomo's man at, yeah. at Bramwell Lane. I'd go with Mousse over, over Connolly, truth be told. But Again, I don't think we need to do that. Nah. 
So the only alternatives to uh, Jim up front, led by Jimenez, would be uh, Josh King, 6.3 million we could have. Yeah, I like Josh King over Danny Ings, I'll tell you that. And he has been playing consistently as Josh King. I like Josh King over Danny Ings. You might not in a couple of weeks. Yeah, maybe not. Plus, I think it's easier to leave Danny Ings out. <laughs> yeah. And there is a, a semi-premium we can go back to here. Is Alexander Lacazette. Semi-premium. Yeah, At he's not a bad shot either. Million. Um, I actually feel on reflection, we should probably get Lacazette into this team. If we can afford him, then we should. So who would you sell? It'd be Danny Ings for Lacazette. Danny Ings, start with Mope tomorrow. We'd start with that front three. And, and then, then, and then suddenly to, picking the team becomes brutal. Do we need to downgrade a Pulisic to potentially Yarmolenko then at that point? Well, possibly, yeah. If we're going to go with that kind of front three, maybe. I'd rather have Lacazette and Yarmolenko than Pulisic and Ings I, I any think, day of the week. I think we need Lacazette in and then we could look at, say, captain in... Obviously, Spurs and Arsenal will never play at home at the same time. And yeah, you've got captains at then between mm. Lacazette, Son, and, and then maybe another, I'd probably... Maybe rather hold on to Pulisic as an option, although I don't feel you could captain him at the moment, could you, with hudson Adoy still leaving? No, there's too, too much rotation risk with Pulisic. I think Lacazette is a must instead of Danny Ings, and then whoever we need to sacrifice out of Pulisic or Tielemans, we downgrade one or the other um, to Yarmolenko, because that gives us the best part of a million if it's Pulisic too. I will confirm before the end of the day the final choice of this wildcard team on Twitter. I hope that the conversation has helped you with your choice for some. Um, I think to close the pod, one of the things I would say is a lot of teams generally are becoming quite template-ish. I see a lot of people saying, oh, I'm happy with eight or nine. I can't see me changing it. And the thought process around that is that you have to have some differentials to go with that. I don't think that's necessarily true. Obviously, if you find the right, right one's brilliant, but then I think, like, what was the stat last week in terms of ownership of, say, Aguero, Sterling and De Bruyne was like 0.14% or something for all three. That's a combination. Yeah, of... like, so it remembers kind of your combination ownerships and things like that. Yeah. Mm. Having um, said that, essentially, I've just minus Ford to get two differential defenders into my team. So make of that what you will. Mm. Uh, the zombie team are doing all right, mate. We are now up to... Uh, 133k overall, 65 points last week. Incredible. 133k. We're getting in this week with Ryan, Trent, Van Dyke, and Laporte. <laughs> you naming the team out. Yeah, first. Van Dyke and Laporte are, are, are injured and fucked, so we're going to end up with O'Connell. Van Dyke's maybe. A doubt. I'm sure if he's got two legs, he'll play. He can do shoelaces up. He'll play. But uh, Diop and O'Connell are our backup defenders. So O'Connell's not a bad shout this week. Diop as well. Even Newcastle. We could end up with clean sheets there. Um, Salah as the armband as always Tielemans Sigurdsson De Bruyne it's not a bad midfield getting into this week uh, I don't know about Sigurdsson against you guys but we'll it's see it's amazing to think we list all those differentials yeah Gilfie Sigurdsson it's doesn't not get even a in, mention not it's even incredible. in there uh, Vardy Jota up front and then a mix match then Donker Jay, Che Adams and stuff I don't know what's going to happen <laughs> I don't know how we got, Che Adams managed to get into this zombie team you know, the mistake we made with this zombie team is the same mistake we make every year we look at yeah Donker's definitely the best budget midfielder right we'll stick him there yeah, the, no, an- the, an- the answer was to spread the funds a bit better because of injuries are always going to hit you on these zombie teams. Where, where are we ranked in Tom and Nick's league? In Tom and Nick's league, we are we were about eighty uh, second. Wow, that's good. Um, yeah, it's not bad. How many points have we got overall? Let's have a look here. I don't want to know. It's a lot more than our main five teams. six five. I'm just interested in how many points <clears throat> the person at the top of Nick and uh, Tom's league is six oh seven. It's about uh, fifty points. What's their overall? Uh, click dead, on that, dead and you? buried overall rank is 6,130 it's madness uh, with 607 points fantastic and I, I think dead teams had a big resurgence last couple of weeks mm. uh, particularly like Perez's hat trick yeah that some of the Leicester returnees if you're talking Friday. about dead teams I mean this dead team really went big at the back Robbo, Trent, Van Dyke, and Laporte that was a bold big at the back did we start. go free Liverpool defensive yes in a dead team with Jamar Lascelles as the, uh, oh, the defender. Oh, uh, that's the, the team that's leading. That's yeah. interesting, that. Mm. So dead team there with um, Robertson, Alexander, Arnold and Van Dyke, and it's sitting... And Laporte. And Laporte. Well, obviously, Laporte's been and injured. It, and but it's that's, sitting 6,000 in the world. Yeah, so <clears throat> someone tell me bigger at the back is dead. It's the armband on Raheem Sterling 
um, which has helped. His 20-point haul in game week one will obviously have massively helped. Who's up front in that team? King and Vardy. King and Vardy's not a bad shout. Sterling's the captain. Yeah. He's got uh, De Bruyne as well. Yeah. Fraser, Perez. I mean, you'd argue, and if you look, look at, at Fre- Perez and Fraser have done so badly this well, season. Yeah. Until obviously Perez last week. But yeah, yeah. I mean, they've not been in investments. There's another one, Ryan Fraser. Not on that watch list. Yeah. He Different. dropped in price if, again. If said, He's down to seven million now. If you just said anyone start the season, Ryan Fraser, Gilfie Sigerson will be owned by like no under one. 5% and you won't consider them for your, your team. wild card. That your is differential mental. team is incredible. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, let's wrap up the show. Manchild is joining us. Manchild, are you going to make any transfers this week? Let's let's spend a bit of time on your team this week, Manchild. Uh, I got locked out of my account again. So. You're locked out of your account? I haven't been for about three weeks. Otherwise, I'd win. Oh, okay. That's the excuse. Otherwise, I'd win. But I've been locked out of try my account. Try resetting your password. Yeah. I have to, every time I try and log in, because it's like I log in. Just make your password password. Now, great. Now you told everyone on the podcast what the password is. Like it wasn't let's, password let's, already Let's before. not get back into a hacking conversation. Yes. Good luck, everybody. We're game week 11. Uh, we'll be back next week with a whole bunch of content as per usual. Main pod, Sky FF, Tottenham. Uh, you'll be watching your boys on the telly. I'll be there this weekend because we're at home um, and all of that other stuff. Jazz. Jazz. Ciao for now. Q Music Man Show. Good luck, everyone. The Fantasy Football.